Today we're going to work on the drive unit. First we take off the cover of the inverter to see if there's any coolant in there. So we have to remove all the torque bolts around it. Just so you know this is a torque uh, T30 and the torque applied to fasten them was 5 newton meter. Before we can remove the inverter cover first you have to remove four times a T10 torque screw. Uh, the the torque with which they were fastened was less than 2 newton meters, which is the lowest that I can uh, measure. The housing of the inverter is aluminum. This piece here is also aluminum. So in order not to damage it, we use a plastic pry bar and try to pry it off like this. Good news, there is no coolant in the inverter. Okay, next I want to remove the inverter and the gearbox, which is this plus this, from this over here. So we have to remove all these bolts. But there's one wire going all the way through and that is the the white wire over here and so if you follow that wire it goes into the the plugs in there so that's this plug over here you can easily unplug it by uh, pushing on the little tab over here and then pull it out so this connector is too big to fit through all the holes of all the casts so we have to take out the wires and I don't want to cut the wires so we're going to take the wires out of this uh, connector and you can do that by taking a little screwdriver and sticking it uh, in this little slot over here you can uh, push out or lever out the uh, blue piece and then you can uh, with the pliers you can just pull out um, all the wires make sure to label the wires first and also label the the, the female uh, connector over here so for later on you can easily assemble it Next we're cutting the zip ties, uh, which is this one, this one, here, uh, here, and the last one is uh, difficult to see, it's, it's down there. So now the wire is loose temporarily, we can tuck it uh, uh, back here, but now it's uh, easy to remove when we're going to separate the, uh, the, the gearbox from the motor. Now I'm going to put the cover back on the inverter without bolting it all the way just for protection while we are going to remove all those bolts. Before I put the cover back on look how clean it is inside. There's a little bit of uh, sticky goo on the on the casing that seems to be the same as the the goo that they put on the uh, so-called IGBTs there. These bolts are M13 torqued at 14, which is 1.4 newton meter. Also, we have to remove this cover and unbolt three bolts here for the current conductors before we can separate all these halves. So removing the bolts is pretty easy. Also, you can use this uh, U-joint adapter so you can easily reach the uh, bolts that are otherwise uh, restricted for space for, by the uh, inverter cover. So next we're going to pierce these, this warning sticker. There. These are torque T25, torqued with 2 newton meter. Alright, the bolts are off. Now we can pry this off. Plastic tool. One hand, the other hand is holding the camera. So. Should be some o rings or something. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. You have some more torques. Three of them. The three bolts are out. It's Torx T50, 50 that is, tightened with 10 foot pounds. Now I want to separate these two halves. That's going to be a battle, so quite some force needed. Just to be safe, I'm going to remove this one first because I don't want it to get damaged. So, uh, bolt there, there, and there. All three are metric 10 and torqued with 10 newton meter. Now it's off. This is a rubber green o-ring on each side. Next I'm going to remove this thing here, which is uh, M13 here, M13 here, and M13 there. All of them are M13 torqued 20 newton meter. 
and it comes right off. And there's a spline inside. So I'm too old to have too much of a fight to get these two parts uh, apart from each other. So I put bolt in here and I just put a piece of wood like this. And I take a uh, crowbar and uh, put it like here. And, uh, and oh, there it goes already. Okay, so yeah, that is it. Next, now that we have a little crack, like uh, we use a plastic tool, and then uh, because we don't want to damage the the aluminum, and then uh, pry it open all the way around, and so on. After prying it open with uh, the blue plastics, uh, it's easiest just to grab it here, wiggle it up and down, and it comes right off. Now we have to pay attention because this uh, cable is still still here, so we have to loosen these temporary uh, fastened bolts again, put it off, and uh, push the cable back out. Now it's apart. Now we have to uh, push this cable uh, through the hole here so to completely separate uh, the two halves. Remember, we took off this uh, black thing over here. With a, it has an internal spline connects to this uh, axle over here. It's, uh, on this side, it's M6, and so if you turn it, it engages or disengages the parking pole. Now it's off. Now it's on. So there's a leaf spring over here that um, creates the clicking sound, and there's a bar going over there with a little spring that. Uh, moves this pole over here and then the pole engages in this uh, slot over here so that is unique to the toyota i read teslas are not supposed to need this system so just now when i opened this up the parking pole was engaged so right now i'll, I'll uh, disengage it and when we reassemble the drive unit then um, it's easier to uh, to assemble because we don't need to perfectly align this pole with one of the notches over there so after we've uh, clamped these two halves back together I will uh, engage the uh, parking brake and then rotate uh, all the gears a little bit until the pole falls into the one of the notches so that the computer does not get uh, confused because it it thinks that the park was engaged while in reality it's not and so on also note that there's slightly more space right there to put the wire through so i found seal remnants right here seems to have the same diameter but this seal seems like brand new so maybe this seal is from a previous rebuild by tesla of this drive unit who knows next i'm going to remove the differential it is a bunch of nuts here. They're all M10 with six newton meter. Okay, the nuts are loose. Let's see if the gear comes out. And it does. That's good. Next we're going to remove three bolts, one there, one there, and there's a third one there, trust me. Then we're going to take these two things out, this whole axle with everything on it and this whole axle with everything on it, or shaft, simultaneously. So it's uh, three times M10 and it's only four newton meter torque. I forgot there's three more M10 bolts with six newton meters through these holes in the gear you can reach them those have to be loosened as well before you can remove it so while i was doing this this ring fell out or it's not even a full ring it's a piece of metal it uh, corresponds to this uh, axle over here and here on the left side we have a kind of a ring like that as well Next, we're using a crowbar and a hammer. The 
won't go off because there's this uh so the last shaft will not come out because it's stuck in the bearing and the bearing won't come out because um, this whole shaft is uh, on the spline of the rotor which is in there and uh, this plastic uh, thing is uh, preventing the uh, the whole thing to come out so I first have to remove this with a, a bolt over there and uh, one down there and another one somewhere over there but before you can take those uh, bolts off first you have to take the c-ring off and this plastic gear and then you have access to the three bolts so these are torqued with a 6 newton meter and a Torx T30. So now the three bolts are loose. We can take this apart and we can finally take the last gear out. So this is the motor shaft. We already seal, see that there's a seal over there and this is the uh, the, the spring that it belongs to that seal. So let's get it off. Yeah. Yuck. So with a toothbrush I removed most of the grease from the spline of the rotor. Put it in a Ziploc bag, going to turn it inside out and reuse it in the future because I have no clue what kind of grease it is and where to buy it and whatnot. And I want to pull this rotor back in that direction. And there may be an Aegis brush and whatnot that I don't want to contaminate with uh, this kind of uh, grease. Remember the seal remnants we found? I thought it came from this seal over here. Well, actually, it has a totally different color. This is dark gray. This seal is more, yeah, black. So I cleaned this up over here. And uh, guess what? The seal in here is completely gone. It has all kind of chips and it matches in color and in size with the remnants so how in the heck that must that means that this piece has gone like through between the balls of the bearing here instead of being shredded to smithereens it apparently made it from from there through the balls in here and it ended up here oh that's really weird also this spring here it, it's impossible for this spring to be uh, held in place by only this kind of seal geometry. So then if you add the missing piece that we just found, then it makes a nice, a nice holding location for this spring, which makes me think that this, this piece really belongs to this seal over here. Also, I feel no play in either axial direction or any radial direction of this rotor nothing it's held very well in place also there is no visible significant wear in any of these spline teeth they're all the same width from start to end so maybe the wear takes place on the female part of the spline so we have this little feeder and so if you feel from top to bottom it's totally smooth no jumps so on first sight, no signs of wear due to, for example, uh, electric discharges and such. Nice to see is this is a little oil pump. This is the axle from which we remove the black gear. And if you rotate it, it's uh, working like this. And this is supposed to be uh, on there, like this. So it pumps the oil from the filter here to a little pipe up there, a little hose and it spits it out right there in this orientation with this, like oriented like that. So look at this little breather. You can uh, disassemble it and uh, take the cap off, it's a snap fit. 
and then uh, comes into two more parts. This plastic part, external thread is threaded in here, and it has a little labyrinth, like where the air can zigzag up and down, but it's very difficult for fluid to uh, splash out of. So the transmission oil is uh, staying inside. Then there is this little breather over here. I think for the coolant you can carefully pop up the, the plastic cap. And what you see then looks like it's just part of the aluminum cast, but actually this is some kind of soft permeable uh, spongy material. So I guess gases can uh, go through there. So I pried it out and the three snap fit plastic tabs broke off. You can actually still see one in there. So that's a problem. We do not want that in our coolant system.